Hello, it's Jimmy here again at O'Reilly's, and today you can probably see I'm a student. So I've come down here to try and learn something different about my job, which is something I've never really got involved with. Um, various reasons why I've always been too busy, and it's got to do with ECU remapping and stuff like that. Uh, I've never really got involved with it because I've always liked to fix the problem, and a lot of remapping is is really ways of skipping a fix and trying to do uh, like a basically DPF deletes and EGR deletes and stuff like that. But there are very, very certain cases where it would come in handy and the knowledge on knowing how to do that properly is going to be needed in the future for me. Uh, so I'm here today at this place. Well, it's not on here, but it's the OBD company. I'm going to go inside. We're going to do a two day course here and see if we can get up to scratch what, what's needed to do ECU remapping and stuff like that. So I've come down here to their office, which is in Chesterfield area. This is their office here and that is their contact details over there. All right, we're just inside. We're going to go in and get ready. So here's um, the guy who runs it. This is Lewis. Um, if you want to just give us a quick, I suppose, talk about what it is you do here on the course and what it involves and stuff. Okay. Uh, so on the course, we're going to go through uh, all the remapping, stage one, stage two tuning. Uh, we go through deactivations. Um, deactivations will be such as like AdBlue, DPF stuff. Yeah, all yeah. that sort of stuff, AdBlue, DPF. So stuff like the AdBlue system um, and the DPF. Covering all uh, things to do with DPF. that is an actual DPF filter there. That's what they look like. If you haven't seen one, some people haven't seen what they look like inside. So yeah, we're on the course. We're going to be covering uh, OBD programming, uh, connecting to the uh, ECU directly. Uh, we'll go through all the different tools on the market. So on the, on the different tools on the market out there, how to use them in different methods. So this is the Alien Tech. Is that also known as on a, it's different KES too, is yeah, it? so this is the older version, uh, older version for OBD and older version for Bench. That's now being improved with the version 3. This does OBD and so Bench. So this is the version 3. That's the new one. Then you've got Auto Tuner yeah. and Flex. Flex. That's it. Good. So on the course we'll be covering like this, the differences between the different tools. So here we've got the Auto Tuner on the next slide. We've got the uh, KES and then the next one we've got the Flex. Uh, the differences between the three tools and some other tools on the market as well coding in ECUs, programming modules, body control modules, airbag modules, and all that as well. Um, and on the next slide, uh, we're covering stuff like this like how not to brick the ECU, how not to damage the ECU. So, making sure that you're doing things that aren't going to cause issues on the vehicle when you go and do a job uh, so nothing goes wrong. So, right here, we've got a perfect example of why cars will need remapping or tuning basically so this is an audi a5 it's just recently failed an mot because it's had the dpf tampered with so this is happening a lot today uh, in 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 the um, and it's going to happen a lot more in the future mot standards have increased and obviously mot checks have increased for diesel particulate filters especially and they are now failing cars a lot more a lot more um frequently than they used to so we're going to have a look at what's going on with this car and we'll show you how to sort it out so so here's part of the reason why you would have to remap some vehicles so here this one has failed the mot test because of a particle filter being tampered with so new particle filter. And we'll show you how to sort it out so this one has 
had a brand new DPF fitted down there. You can see some, it's got some clamps, new clamps and stuff on it. And if we look over here, we've got the details of why it has failed its MOT. So it's a 3 liter Audi A5 and it's failed the MOT because the diesel particulate filter shows evidence of tampering. Now, all of that has been fixed, so a new DPF has been fitted. So now that the new DPF has been fitted, the problem is, is the car has had the DPF software deleted. So what needs to be done now is this car needs to be have its original software installed back on. So here's a bit of the process we're going to do. First is to ID what ECU is in the car, which is identify. This is the auto tuner tool here that we're using. So right here tells you we have this ECU fitted, which is the CP14. So then we, what we do is identify it. Then we read the ECU, save the file that's on the car, and then we can download the is it download the file from the server yeah so and then so we're going to do a server download of the software which is a stock file and put it back onto the car mm. these are all of the different software updates so number six seven eight basically it goes all the way down to number one so we're going to put the latest software update back on the car right so skip a few minutes onwards the file has been loaded into the car you can see we can well i can see it's got a dpf on there but that is not a new one it's been spray painted to look like a new one now we're back in the car we're gonna start it up right now we can see that we have got an engine fault on the car we've got an engine light on and a flashing glow plug symbol so what that means is this car has still got a fault somewhere with the dpf so Either there's a fault with the sensors, or there is a fault with the actual DPF. Has the DPF been replaced? We're not 100% sure yet, because we haven't got that far. But it's come in to have a stock file put back on the car. And that's what we're doing. Right, well, that's what Lewis is doing, not me. He's just giving me the training here on how the process works and what's involved. Okay, so I've just finished. I'm just finishing up on the course. It's the end of day two, and I think I've learned what I need to know basically for what I want to do. Um, everyone else has left. I'm the last person here. Okay, we've just finished the two day course now. Um, I just thought we'd just get your opinion on what the course was like and what you brought to it. Yeah, well, the main thing for me with the course is, is just you're scared of what you don't know. I was always scared of tuning. I've never really got involved with it because I've, I've always been scared of, you know, you see all these wires and pins, it looks a bit, um, well, scary is the word, I suppose, yeah, if you don't know. Yeah. Um, but showing, you showing the class, how everything works, you know, that when you when you get a tool like this one, I think this is the one I'm gonna choose, like out of all of them, but um, the handy thing about this one is, like you showed, is when, when you've got a car that needs some sort of file put on it, this mm -hmm. actually shows you diagrams. This is where you put this. That's where that pin goes. 
and you just basically it's self-explanatory really when you need to show me how to do it a teenager could probably do it yeah um yeah, yeah. this is the most simplest one for me because you just you just connect it to a car you pick what car it is you choose the file and it, the computer basically just does it for you um the alien tech i think is maybe if you're a bit more advanced um, because this is for a lot more of bench stuff where you're opening an ecu up and actually you know putting pins into the actual ecu and stuff yeah as um, it's used so it's you could probably on. you could probably explain that in better yeah. words than me but um so alien tech has really good for uh, uh cars and vans and uh, its main strength is the agricultural yeah all of the um, weird stuff yeah the weird stuff the boats the jet skis the bikes uh, it still does good cars and vans also. Uh, it just depends what market you're de dealing with, uh, for what Jim is dealing with. Uh, cars and, and vans, really. Yeah, yeah it so out a bit more. As a, maybe maybe in the more. future something to do with agriculture. This is, can do like all your agricultural stuff, all of the weird stuff. But yeah, maybe we'll see what happens. Yeah. Right, so I think that's it for the day two of, the, of the, what I've been doing here. And yeah, I just thought I'd record it. For all of my subscribers on the channel, it might be just something a bit different, different video than the normal repair videos. And uh, that's about it, I think. And right. um, we'll see you in the next video.